Hey guys, so welcome to my new video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about money management. Uh, we all heard money management is important, if not the most uh, important thing. But what is it? Uh, you know, so hopefully in this video, I'm going to explain a few guidelines that you can go by. Uh, something that I have applied myself in the past with some success. And you can observe that uh, happening everywhere else as well. Uh, so I'm going to start with talking about um, objective risk, what that means. Uh, then I'm going to go into illustrating uh, what does it mean, uh, the differences between a businessman and a gambler. Um, then I'm going to go into the nature of quickly rising success. Uh, then I'm going to go into business exit strategy. And I'm going uh, to be talking about how... Um, how do you actually, uh, um, I'm going to give you a few guidelines, how do you actually manage money? Uh, okay. So, um, the first thing that we need to uh, understand with the money management is that it's not really a money management. It's, it's you managing yourself, your own behavior, right? Because you do understand that it's, uh, it's everything is what you do. And that's, um, uh, you know that's what it depends on so you can't really have you can't really manage money there's something outside of you you can manage yourself so money management is really management of your own behavior and we're going to try to go into that these types of behaviors and why we do certain behaviors and why we do other behaviors and why some people are successful and other people are not and uh, hopefully we're going to boil down to these few little discrepancies in the behavior that you can identify and uh, perhaps no longer do that if that's the way you want to go uh, if you decide to remain to be a gambler there's nothing wrong with that either but then there's few other things you have to understand in that sense so for example um, the difference between a gambler and, and a businessman uh, I'm not saying anything is bad with the gambling however if you decide to be a gambler and you enjoy that type of you know adrenaline rush and a dopamine uh, jolt and all that kind of thing there's nothing wrong with that i'm not against it but you need to be um absolutely uh, uh comfortable with having absolutely nothing okay we don't really have anything anyway so that's why a lot of gamblers when they lose everything they feel a very deep spiritual connection because they, they realize oh my god there's nothing really that i have in this life this it's all it's all a game so you know so it's not necessarily going to be a bad thing if, if somebody loses everything this could be a um a sort of uh um, a blessing in disguise okay that's why if we go out there now and say hey stop being a gambler Maybe I'm going to be preventing you the, to have that epiphany that you need to have, okay? So, again, I'm not saying that anything's wrong with the gambling. However, if you want to go that way, you, I highly advise you go into something uh, spiritual so you understand that uh, if you're in a position where you have no friends, no family, no money, that uh, you are taking it uh, as a man, so to speak, okay? And not whining and uh, wanting to, you know, harm yourself. So, okay. So now that we got that out of the way, um, uh, let's go into the other side of the coin. Should you decide to be a businessman, not a gambler? And I'm going to start with sharing uh, my chart. It's not really a chart, but there we go. So you should be able to see... A uh, few notes that I made. So this one is very simple. It's money management guidelines. And uh, what do you do uh, specifically with the money that you profit? Okay. And these are the uh, uh, general guidelines. You don't have to follow them specifically. But there's something like that you need to have. Okay, so I'm going to go into each one of them in a second. But before we do that, let's go to objective risk and then go to the, the, the charts illustrating the business, business and the gambler behavior. So objective risk is obviously, uh, you want to try to be as objective as possible about the risk. What does that mean? For example, if you uh, decide to start the business, 
okay? So it's a, it's a high risk or it's a low risk? Well, if you are talented in that field, you have the experience and um, you, you know, all these different boxes are ticked, then it's probably not going to be that high of a risk for you to start it, especially if you're not taking any loan and you're starting off from your own resources and uh, efforts rather than relying on the cash uh, injection, okay? Um, so that's very important. If you're relying on the cash injection, then it's probably going to be a little bit higher risk. So first of all, you have to understand and, and be objective and say, is that a high risk or not? Um, same thing with the trading. So if you're a smart person and you've really killed it in other areas of life and you go into trading and you think that that intelligence is going to help you in trading, you are in for the surprise. Your intelligence, that type of intelligence, is absolutely um, useless. And it's not only useless, it's harmful. So, and I'm sure, <laughs> you know, all the smart people that have been attracted to it, they learn that very quickly, that, that oh, you know, I've been living my life one-sided all my life. There is this other side of the coin that um, trading forces me to face that I have to learn, okay? Because now I'm going into trading and I'm going, um, I'm, you know, I'm having my ass handed to me. And then I'm like, okay, um, what is happening? I thought that I'm smart. Uh, why things happen like this? And then it's very dangerous because especially if you rely, rely on that type of intelligence, on that technicality uh, in having success, um, you are using a wrong tool, first of all, because you're dealing with the chaos. You're not do, de dealing with, uh, you know, Newtonian physics. You're doing the quantum uh, physics. So, and the chaos is not random. I keep saying chaos is not random. It's not the same thing. So, there are tools that you can apply, but it's not the same tools that you're applying in other um, areas in your life. So, as a consequence, you will see that, oh, there's this area that uh, I'm completely oblivious about, and uh, my logic and my intelligence is, is not a useful tool for that. Uh, and a lot of people can experience that, uh, with the shrinking self-esteem if you if you go out there and and and, and trade and uh, your self-esteem is shrinking um the more you trade the, the the more shrinking that's it's a it's a perfect sign um to tell to tell you that there's nothing wrong with you you're just not using the the right tool in the market okay that that smartness that logic that intellectual uh, prowess that you have it's not gone it's still there it's just that it's not useful in the market, okay? So, okay. Uh, so you have to be an object. For example, if somebody like Ugly Old Go Trades, um, uh, speculates rather, right? So the risk for him is not going to be as high as for somebody who just watched a couple of videos and, exci and excited to like, oh, I got it. All I got to do is if, then, if, then, you know, and, and I got it. And of course, the... the the outcome is not like that at all. So for that person, if you obviously if you go if you decide to go into training, you have to understand that there's going to be very extremely high risk for you to go uh, right off the bat. So what you need to do <laughs> is uh, practice, practice, practice with the small and realize that it takes time, right? So if you trade it for a year with like hundred dollar account and turn that into a thousand, ten thousand, or or whatever then maybe then you'll, you, you, you're, you're ready, okay? So you understand that then your risk is not going to be as high as when it was when you started, okay? So give yourself time to be a white belt, as I always say. Give yourself time to be a white belt. And don't be in a rush because in, in a second I'm going to show you what happens when you rush and when you, when you have a very quick success. Um, you don't want to have too much of the quick success. There are so certain laws in the nature that prevents you from, from having the exponential increase on the chart, right? So same thing with your success. There is no such thing as exponential increase inevitably, right? But there is a quick uh, a few ways to realize and uh, if you start any business and it kicks off and it's really successful, they're, 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 you need to have the exit strategy uh, because especially if you're having that exponential growth, there is an exponential success. Um, in, you know, it, it's not sustainable. I'm going to explain why. Okay. Um, let's go into this chart, illustrating business myth and the gambler behavior. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, first of all, 
uh, we all know this x and y axis which is very basic and simple right so let's say we have the the x and the y and uh, I'm gonna start with the gambler behavior so the gambler behavior goes goes like this it goes like this like that okay so what do we have on this axis and what do we have on that axis on this axis we have a um, a, a a you can we can section it in a few few blocks right so in this axis what we have is we have this is a speculation right so we have a speculation uh, we can like you know s so that's speculation uh, this is a low risk long-term investment um, then this could be a um, business okay this this could be business right here um, you know this could be uh, less of a long term but let's just uh, speculation business and uh, a long term investment okay so this chart is showing us this type of behavior a gambler uh, is putting a lot of the energy or the money or the wealth or whatever you call it in speculation territory okay and most of their uh, equity goes into speculation okay and very little in the business and even less in long-term investment something that lasts you know more than five years like as, as an example real estate is very low risk steady uh, investment it's it's slowly appreciating over time it's not doing any uh, anything crazy um there, there's always a cash flow coming in through your rental you know income uh, plus the the capital gains over it so it's very slow very low risk type of investment um, and again if you are new to this there might not is may not be as low risk so you have to educate yourself you have to learn how to invest in real estate and then um, then do it and some people say well don't bother re re investing in real estate why don't you invest into real estate stocks that's a legitimate um, you know that is a legitimate proposal uh, but the, the only reason for this proposal is just like why bother with the with the uh, tangible real estate because you and it's not really passive income because you need to be monitoring that as well that is not exactly true because you have the property managers you have um, you know people around you that that's their job right so you're just giving employment and you have that property and you don't really need to manage the property yourself so it is a passive income if you structure it right however investing in 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 real estate stocks that's that could also be uh, a solution if you if you don't want to go this way however there's also sort of drawbacks because you know when your house when you have a house the house is house it's it has the you 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 have it it's tangible it's there um if the stock market crashes uh your house is still standing still taking um, you know uh, still taking the, the rental income and in some cases even more rental income than usual during those you know harder times because people lose houses they need rent okay so it's very solid I, I would say that you know definitely definitely uh, focus on that and the business is also uh, something that you need to follow you need to have whatever you're talented on uh, that's your business okay uh, and you gotta work. You gotta you gotta invest in that a little bit, right? So if you, if you get good gains from the speculation, uh, you don't put it uh, back into speculation. You gotta put it this way. So let me, so I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna draw the other chart, uh, and that is a businessman behavior, right? No, sorry, maybe a little bit too. Yeah, like that okay so low risk then you have business and then we have speculation okay um so whenever you 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 you're putting in speculation you don't put everything you got in speculation right what you put is you put a fraction of it because it, it is a speculation you want to keep most of your wealth into the slow appreciating uh, long-term 
uh, investments, then the, the, the business is a little bit more risky because they come and go. And I'll explain why in a second. It's not, it's not that you're failing, okay? It's not that you're failing. Every five years, there's a natural tendency to cycle and, and your business becoming obsolete. Um, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. So it's a little higher risk than the real estate, for example. Um, but it is a lower risk than a speculation, of course, okay? So whenever you get uh, good gains in a, in a speculation realm, what you want to do is you want to go with this guideline. And this guideline is telling us, okay, what do I do? Let's say you had a really good um, uh, profit from your speculation. You had a tangible profit from uh, your business. And then you, you had that slowly, slowly appreciating and that perhaps some cash flow from from um, some steady cash flow from the from your real estate, right? And now it's time for you to take out that profit and what do you do with it, right? Now, if you go with the gambler, um, right? So you take everything and you put it on, on the red, you know, that's obviously a gambler behavior or you put it everything in speculation, that's obviously a gambler behavior. That's not a businessman behavior. And it's quite obvious if you look at it, right? So what do you, what do, you do with it? Well, um, this is the, my suggestion it doesn't have to be like this, but this is my suggestion, and I believe it really it works very well. You put 20% back into your speculation. So, um, you know, let's say you you had, so you take overall profit and you take 20% of that into the speculation. Uh, so if you made uh, 20 Bitcoins out of 2 Bitcoin, uh, you leave 4 Bitcoin, 16 Bitcoin, uh, you pull out and you distribute for, for to other other ways that I'm going to go into in a second, right? Same thing with your business profit. If you take that profit out, you distribute, you put some in speculation, some in other areas. You you get the point. So, uh, first thing you need to look into low risk long term investment. So take some of that and see what is the low risk long term investment. And for you, it's probably going to be real estate. Okay, explore other areas, um, but I like real estate explore other areas, but find out what is that low and steady and low risk and slowly appreciating um, asset that uh, is, is going to be, uh, you know, much more in five years, much more in 10 years, much more in 20 years. That is not risky. It's not speculation. Okay. Uh, you Then the second one, we're giving away, we're giving away 10%. And this is a, a very important one because it's a law of reciprocity and it's a law of the universe. You have to give away 10%. So uh, it's, a, I know it may sound like, you know, what am I doing giving away, you know, the, my hard earned money. That's, it's actually going to help you to have that abundance reality in your life. Because if you give that away, first of all, it's going to help you in a sense of psychologically, it's going to be very therapeutic, right? So it's going to, you're going to experience very interesting things if you've never tr done it before. If you never gave it away, you you know give it a go and you know and see how that feels. Now, when you're giving away, you have to be, have responsibility because you <laughs> giving away is also responsibility because sometimes when you give to somebody, you are not really helping a person. So same thing, you know, like if you. Somebody, as an example, perhaps, you know, not the best example, but if let's say somebody is addicted to something and just keep begging you for it, right? And you give them money, you're not really giving, doing them a favor, right? They may kill themselves. So you have to have some responsibility in giving away. And you give the, the people who perhaps um, really just down on the luck, okay? And this is a little bit like a socialism and communism. And it, and it works and it's good when you keep it between your friends of the, between your family and friends, uh, you need to be a little bit of a socialist and communist. Don't put it into economy because that's when the bad news happens. You know, we've done these experiments before in the past with socialism, socialism and communism. And when you put that into your economy, bad news. So, um, yeah, but you have a friend who's asking for help and is really down on luck. Just give him, uh, give some f for him. Do these things. It's important. It's, it's a money management practice, okay? Now, next one, uh, lifestyle upgrades. Again, some of you may feel like, oh, I don't really deserve it, and perhaps I shouldn't be, um, you know, spending this money on the luxuries. Perhaps I should be more investing into properties a little more. Perhaps like, no, uh, you know, I don't care. You have to spend 10% on luxuries, on something, 
even though if you don't want it lifestyle upgrades okay 10 percent. that's not a lot you know so if you if you always wanted the car and you had a good year buy that car okay try to buy it without uh, um you know uh, any kind of loan right but if it, it but you can buy that car for that 10 percent, buy it okay so treat yourself go on the vacation you always want it don't skip that part it's a very important part of the money management uh, next we want to go into business upgrades so you've got to put the, sharpen the saw as they call it right so you want to upgrade your businesses um, and put 10 percent to upgrade your business okay so what does that mean well that means uh, if you need get a new laptop if you need to uh, um, hire additional person if you need to just anything to do with improving your business perhaps uh, focusing a little bit more on positioning yourself in the market you know dedicate that money for that purpose and it's going to uh, help you then a the business growth another 10 percent you're putting in the business growth so it's it's a little different from the business upgrades uh, the business growth is, you know, focusing on expanding that business and, and whatever that business is required. But make sure that you put some of that there and don't hesitate because, because you know, like I said, if, if, if your business, if, if you decide that in order for your business to grow, there's a, there's a point of leverage where if you hire that specific person, your business will grow. Then hire that person, you know, take the 10%, hire that person. And we're going back to speculation. Uh, 20% is back into speculation, back into that type of game. Okay? So now if you follow all that, you are going to be a businessman. It's impossible not to have a, a inevitable success if you follow this type of money management. Okay? Because sometimes you're going to have a lot of luck in speculation realm. Or, you know, luck and skill. Perhaps everything's combined and you just really have a good, good run, right? that's the time when you really distribute the money uh, evenly between all these other realms of um, you know in investments and, uh, and 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 money flow right you got to keep the money flowing okay you got to keep the money flowing don't keep putting in the same thing you got to keep the money flowing and perhaps that's the best way to describe that diversi diversification diversification doesn't mean that you put um, a little bit in every single you know check coin that's not diversification uh, this is the this diversification. You you distribute between um, uh, the 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 risk in each asset class, okay, in each game, right? Because real estate is a game, business is a game, and speculation is a game. But the money needs to flow according to that uh, proportion if you want to have um, sustainable growth and success in your life and avoid this, you know ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs okay if you really value that type of peaceful approach in your life right that really zen really you know you, you're growing slowly not too fast everything's going well and uh, you know you, 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 you know you're being responsible it is boring a little bit sometimes but you can make it exciting but that's the way to go okay next uh the nature of quickly rising success so that sort of ties in is what happens when somebody just has a lot of success way too quick uh, you know and this is what we normally observe we have a, a an exponential growth right in 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 that business it just goes like that okay and of course it can't keep rising in you know and what you will experience in any business um, that at some point no matter what you do is not growing anymore and it's not that you're doing something wrong it's it's a nature it's it's a, it's a natural um it's, uh, it's a natural cycle attractor it's called right so what happens is that it cycles so whatever you've been doing in the business it's becoming slowly obsolete and uh, people are, are moving away from paying attention onto that and paying attention on something else. So you have two choices at this point because this is what's going to happen. You're going to have massive drop and then you're going to go, whoa, 
and you're going to push all your employees work harder what is happening look what's going on right and then you're going to look pin point fingers that everyone's like like look you know this was happening this was happening oh my god what is going on okay no nothing is going on you have to realize that when you when these events are happening and it seems like oh my there's so many things seem to be destroying your business that's natural process it isn't, it isn't something magic okay it's it's a law of the universe that's how that's how it works and you will notice all these other things how why this business is no longer um, pushing forward so whenever you have this drop you don't need to panic you don't need to push your employees you don't need to do anything what you do is is very simple um, just keep performing the way you perform you're going to notice the 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 performance increasing a little bit right and this is where you want to sell your business this is where you want to exit your business now you have two options here like i said you have one option to sell your business or uh, a second option is to completely completely re re reframe your business basically it needs to do completely different and if you notice all these tech companies um they are becoming they would be they would be obsolete if they kept doing the same thing every five years there's a massive change they release the device that is this completely different to what they released before right um so it's a continuous evolution but the continuous reframing uh, take google for example google is not the same company that it was before look look uh, look at what google is doing right because perhaps they understand this type of uh, thing and they go into all these other uh, areas that are emerging and that is why google is not a specific business it's 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 sort of um it's actually the the <laughs> advertising company that is using these um resources to invest into very uh, clever uh, clever ways right so it's that is why it's continuing going up um so you have an opportunity there but you have to understand that this will happen and it's now nobody's fault it's not your employees fault it's no 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 government's fault it's nobody's fault this is a natural process okay uh, but if you if you if you see this happening uh, that's what you do uh, you 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 need to be looking for that type of situation and the exit uh, thing and just say goodbye to that company i know you build it i know you took so much time and effort it was your baby and it's difficult to say goodbye to that company uh but you have to there's going to be new new newborn so to speak okay and you have to let go and sell it to somebody maybe somebody else going to uh, reframe it and um, put you know if you if if you if you feel feel confused and you don't know what to do next sell it somebody else will know um or if you do know what to do reframe your business completely and sometimes there's going to be might be a surprise uh that you plan to do one thing but then the universe is telling you that look there's a demand somewhere else okay and just go there right listen don't be too strict into one direction if you see that wow it's i thought that i'm going to be selling these widgets but everybody's asking this and this selling even better perhaps we should just change the company and go with that and the answer is yes you should all right so let's go into uh, yeah and then that's it how i explained the business exit strategy this is your business exit strategy the point that i was trying to make that this is a natural process everything that i'm showing you guys here is this is a natural behavior right um uh, some people are genetically um, more prone to, for this type of behavior. Some people are genetically more prone for this type of behavior. Neither of these behaviors are wrong, uh, but you have to understand who you are and learn to live with it. Okay, uh, and the gambler will always have more excitement. In, well, not always. If the businessman can create the excitement by doing some crazy stuff like jumping out of airplanes and you know doing some crazy stuff you can still do that but the gambler usually in the finance realm <laughs> will experience much more ups and downs and uh, that uh, the businessman wouldn't um and uh they will live a little bit more uh, crazy life okay so i suggest to find the balance and i think if you if you're really trying to uh, accumulate wealth and have financial freedom uh, go with the businessman uh, if you're trying to just get you know as as if you understand th that you are a gambler if you're aware that you're a gambler 
then own it, right? Don't don't say that you're a business, but don't say that you're trying to, uh, you know, build wealth or become a financially free. Just own it and say, well, I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a complete gambler, and um, you know, and this is the way uh, I want to go, and that's okay. But like I said, make sure that you're totally okay with losing everything you have. All right, that's it for now, guys. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, please um, comment down below. If you think that's useful to somebody, please share. Um, and I'm gonna be making these videos every week. Um, these these little videos, these little tips that I that helped me, and uh, I saw other people employed, and this very, it was very successful for them too. I'm gonna be making those every week. Uh, and so yes, yeah, so, so subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.